Hi everybody, I'm Alex from the Synthesis Development Team, and today we're going to be going over setting up joints for your robot in preparation to export it into Synthesis. So, once you've completed the previous tutorials in which we have set up our drivetrain and configured our plugin, we are now ready to go ahead and just jump straight into editing joints. So we're going to open up the joint editor, and you should be greeted with a list of joints. Now, if it looks different, for example, if they all look like uh, have this kind of orange background. Don't worry, we'll get into that in a second. But you should at least see a list of all your joints in your assembly with little thumbnails next to them. Now, if you do not see your joint, make sure that all your sub assemblies are in the top level of your assembly file. If it's on the top level, then Synthesis will not be able to find them. So, once we're ready, we can actually go ahead and start getting used to navigating and looking at joints. If you may have noticed already, if you hover above each of these thumbnails, you can see that our camera in our viewport will actually move and highlight the joint we're editing. This is very useful for trying to identify where our joint is on our robot. And then on the right hand side we have our joint type. Now this would be whatever type of joint you're trying to edit. So for example we have the drivetrain wheel which would belong to any joints that are controlling a wheel for our drivetrain. In this case all six of our wheels are drivetrain wheels so all of our options would be drivetrain wheel. Now, if you had a mechanism joint, for example, like an elevator, an arm, or an intake, you would select a mechanism joint. If you notice, actually, our settings change depending on what type of joint you have selected. So for drivetrain wheel, we have side, which is just simply what side of the robot is this wheel on. As you can see, this wheel is on the left-hand side, so we selected left. And if we go to a right-hand wheel, we can see this is on the right-hand side with the right option selected. And then our final option is our wheel type. Now this would be the type of wheel that is currently connected to this joint. Uh, for example, for your high traction, your stealth wheels, or your pneumatic wheels, you can just click normal. However, if it's an Omni or Mechanum wheel, you would select Omni or Mechanum. So since all these wheels are just your basic pneumatic wheels, we will select normal. Now if you go to our mechanism joint option, you can see the options are different. So we have weights in pounds. Now this would be the weight of your entire subsystem connected to that joint. So for example, the entire weight of your intake, your arm, or your elevator stage. And then you have the joint driver option. Now currently we only support motors, but in the future we may support stuff like pneumatics or other types of actuators. But for right now we can just leave this to motor. Now since this wheel isn't a mechanism joint, we can go ahead and set this back to drivetrain wheel and make sure our side and wheel type is correct. And now we're good. You can completely export these joints and your robot will work inside of Synthesis. However, if you're doing a lot of emulation or proper gearbox simulation, you're going to want to head and go into the advanced window. Now inside of the advanced window, you can actually set up your sensors. So for example, if I just remove that sensor and add a new one, we can click new sensor and you can select what type of sensor you want to add. Now currently we only support encoders, but we do plan to introduce ultrasonics or other types of sensors in the future. So if you click encoder, you can see our port options change. Since most encoders in FRC use two ports on the digital input and output uh, rail on the robot rail, we support that option too. So in this case, we'll say one and two, but this can be zero and one, two and three, whatever ports you have configured on your real life robot rail. And then our next option is our counts per revolution. This is the amount of ticks or counts of your encoder that equal one full revolution of the encoder's output shaft. Uh, you could usually find this on any storefront or, or the documentation you bought with your encoder. So in this case, let's say this is 100 ticks per revolution or 100 counts per revolution. Once you're done, you can just click Save Sensor, and then you can go down to the next option, which is our gear ratio. Now this is just the final gear ratio that is driving the wheel. So if you, for example, had a tough box gearbox that was 10 to one, you select this as a 0 0.1, or if it's a one to 10, 10. Uh, I may have that backwards, but you can usually consult the math or your gearbox output shaft. So once we click OK, we can now double check, make sure all our settings look correct, and they all look good. So we can go ahead and just click OK. And then you can actually double check your work using the toggle joint viewer. Now, what this does is actually highlight all the different joints on your robot and correspond them to a certain color. So in this case, blue is static, which means this will not move. Green is all your properly jointed. And red, which in this case we don't have any, would be any joints that currently don't have a driver. Uh, so pretty much red is bad. So you want to go ahead and look at your robot. Look for any parts that are supposed to move. In this case, our wheels. Make sure they're all green. Look for any parts that aren't supposed to move. In this case, our drivetrain. Make sure that all looks blue. And if this is all good, then you're ready to export, which will be in our next tutorial. So we can go ahead and just... 
toggle that off and hopefully I can see you in the next tutorial. See ya.